both facts and queries can contain multiple relations. The meaning in each case is a little bit different, so pay close attention to what I'm about to say. We're going to use the same example facts that we had before, and then we're going to add one more compound fact. A fact can include multiple relations, and it can also include variables. Okay, so a fact in its general form says fact, and then says a conclusion, and then zero or more hypotheses. So far, every fact we've looked at had just a conclusion. But conclusion and hypotheses are related in the following way. If you have a fact with multiple things, then it means the conclusion is true if all the hypotheses are true. Now, when we didn't have any hypotheses, it was just stating that the conclusion was in fact true. Fact. John likes dogs. But if you have hypotheses, then the conclusion isn't true unless all the hypotheses are true. As an example, I could state as a fact that there is a child relation between any C and any P, just as long as there's a parent relationship between the P and the C. So, when I satisfy this fact, I have to do it with one binding to C and one binding to P. So these two P's refer to the same thing. These two C's refer to the same thing. And we know who's a parent of whom already based on the parent facts that we stated before, which are encoded in this tree structure. So the child relation is just saying there's a relation that goes exactly the other way around. So I state a fact which has variables and hypotheses and conclusions. At this point, if I make a query about child Herbert Delano, where's Herbert here, where's Delano here, it is the case that there's parent Delano Herbert somewhere in my repository of all facts. So it should be the case that there's a child relation between Herbert and Delano. And logic expresses that by saying, success! Now there are no variables in this query, and that's okay. So it doesn't print out a binding between variables and values because that's not needed. All it's telling you is that it is the case that there's a child relationship between Herbert and Delano. And if we ask if there's a child relationship between Eisenhower and Clinton, well that would only be true if Eisenhower was Clinton's parent, which it's not. So that would write failure. So the logic language is mostly in the business of telling us what's true and what's false based on the simple facts that we created by just having conclusions and also the compound facts that tell us how to derive new facts from the facts we already know. We can include variables in the queries even when we have compound facts. So we could ask, what are all the kids that are in a child relationship with Fillmore? We can see Fillmore has three kids, and just as we would expect, the logic interpreter will tell us, success! Fillmore was quite productive. The kid could be Abraham, could be Delano, or could be Grover. And this is quite a general mechanism for issuing queries and stating facts. So if we go back to where we were before, we had these facts, and then we're going to include this new fact. Child CP is true if parent PC. So remember, the first one's always the conclusion. The rest are all hypotheses. In this case, we only have one hypothesis. We can now issue queries. The query that I issued before was, is it the case that um, Herbert is in a child relationship with Delano, and the logic language says yes, I could even ask, what's everything that I know? And it will tell me all the parent relations that I stated in my file, as well as all of the child relations that could possibly be derived from this set of parents, using this one compound fact. So as we can see, we get a very productive amount of information about whatever domain we're describing with our facts just by using a compound fact that tells us how relations are related to each other. Okay, so those are compound facts. We can also have compound queries. A query can
can have multiple relations, and an assignment must satisfy all relations at the same time. So I can write query with a bunch of relations in a row. It's satisfied if all the relations are true, but we only get one assignment to each variable. So if I write down this fact, and then I issue a query, which has two lines, it says there must be a parent relation between grandpa and some kid, and a child relation between Clinton and that kid. So Clinton's the child of some kid whose parent is the grandpa. Is there such an assignment to kid and grandpa? Well, yes, there is. The grandpa is Fillmore, the kid is Abraham, and child Clinton Abraham is true, and parent Fillmore Abraham is also true. These are both satisfied at the same time, which means that we've satisfied the entire query. So if I wanted to ask, what are all of the child YX and child X Eisenhower at the same time assignments to the value variables X and Y? Well, what I'm saying is there must be some Y and some X, such that Y is the child of X and X is the child of Eisenhower. So that will be true as well. Here's one instance, Y is Abraham, X is Fillmore, and Eisenhower is at the top. Or we could have Delano Fillmore, or we could have Grover Fillmore. So compound queries are different from compound facts, in that every relation within the compound query has the same rule. We just and all of these together, they all must be true at the same time. Whereas in a compound fact, the first one was special, that was the conclusion, and the rest were hypotheses. There were things that should already be true in order to verify the conclusion. 